Hello, welcome. In this video, we're looking at the idea of money and how it's valued now versus the future. Now versus the future. So imagine, you know, just to get this point across, let's look at a simple example. Imagine you had a choice. And the question is, which one would you rather do? Would you rather have $10,000 now or $10,000 two years from now? Which one would you rather have? Now, there are different arguments for both. You might pause and think about which one you'd want to do. And let's, let's just analyze maybe the way we look at this in, in personal finance. First of all, let's say the, the value of money that you have today is called present value. It's how much it's worth presently. So present value makes sense. So if you chose $10,000 today, then, then the present value of your money is that $10,000. Okay. But the value of your money at a future date is called the future value. So you have present value today and future value at some point in the future what that money will be worth. When you're deciding on which one you want to take, do you want to take the money now or later, one of the essential questions we would have to ask ourselves is, well, if you got the money now and were able to invest it, how much would you make? All right? if, you were, if you got it now, how much would you make from investing it? Because that's one of the ideas here. One of the ideas is you would always take the money now because by taking it later, you lose the chance to invest it. You lose the opportunity to make it, make it grow. And that's called an opportunity cost. So that difference is essentially the opportunity cost of taking the money later. In other words, it's the amount you... The difference between the money value now and later from the perspective of how much you can make from interest is called the opportunity cost. And the way we measure that difference is in the interest. It's the time value of money. It's all about the interest. That's, that's the difference between how much uh, you, you can make by having money now and getting it later. So after one year, let's say you invest $10,000, how much would you have? Well, we use this formula right here, which is, it basically says the future value, FV, equals the present value times one plus the interest. So you take your present value, whatever it is, and you multiply it by, let's say your interest rate is 6%, you would take your present value and multiply it by 1.06. That's 106%. And that gives you the future value of the money after a year. So to calculate it, we can do 10,000 times one plus 0.06, that's say 6% interest, or make it simpler, 1.06, and that's $10,600. So and just after a year, your present, your present value would be 10000 but the future value would be 10600 And the difference between these two is the time value of money. That's $600 you've essentially made by investing it. So just, just waiting a year on $10,000 means you would have lost $600 or the ability to invest the money and make $600. After a second year, what would happen? Well, after a second year, you'd do the same calculation. You'd have the $10,600. we are going to assume you did not invest it. And you're going to multiply it by 1.06 again. Now, if you look at this number, it's telling you that basically, wow, you start off with $10,000. And then after two years, you have $11,236. And that's, right, that's quite a bit. You're talking about over $1,000. So if you took $10,000 in two years, you would have lost the opportunity, right, to invest that $10,000 now. And in other words, you would not have been able to make that $1,000 in interest through investments. And this is one of the central ways we think about um, money, uh, through the time value of money. The longer you wait to get the money, the less of a chance you have to invest it. So in this case, you're talking about you're losing about $1,236. And I say about because there's also inflation over that time, so your money is worth a little bit less. But let's say it's about $1,236. We can generalize this process to make it super friendly. We can say that the future value after one year, there's our, what we just did, right? We took our $10,000, our present value, times 1.06. But then after two years, we did that again, right? They had the original 10,000 times 1.06 times another 1.06. And after three years, we do it three times. So that's, right, that's three years our compound interest, how much we'd have in total in the bank, including our original 10,000 and plus all that interest. So 10,000 times 1.06, that's the first year, whatever that number is, times another 1.06 the second year, times another 1.06 in the third year. So we can generalize this for any amount of years. Let's say T years. So 
all we have to really do when you're looking at compound interest, when it's compounded once a year, it's 10,000 times 1.06 to the power of t. So future value after t years is just 10,000 times 1.06 to the t power. And that little, that little t right there is an exponent. It tells you how many times to multiply. So we can use this formula because, let's say we want to jump ahead to 10 years. We don't necessarily want to plug in 10,000 and multiply by 1.06 10 times. It's nice to have a faster way of doing that. So there, we just plug in that little 10, the exponent, and we get about almost $18,000, right? 17,908.48. So this is how we can find the future value uh, of, 10, of the money after 10 years. Now, that's compounded once a year. And FV's future value equals present value times 1 plus R. R is the interest rate to the power of T. Now, if it's compounded twice a year, what that means is you take your interest rate, whatever it is, let's say 6%, and you divide it by 2. So you get 3% twice a year. And so instead of getting 6% once a year, you compound it twice. You get 3% twice a year. And this is the formula that you would have. So basically, if you look at the structure of it, you have 1 plus the interest rate, let's say 6% divided by 2 is 3%. You could have it twice a year, so it's to the second power, times the number of years, because it could be in the account for multiple years. And you can see the similar structure in these two. Like this one, you could put over 1, and then, to the, and then you can have it to the power of 1t. So whatever the denominator is of this term, it's 1 here, that'll also be next to the t value in the exponent. So here we have a 2 in the denominator. So you can see that little 2 in the exponent here. And if, you, if you're doing it four times a year quarterly, it would be this, right? Present value times 1 plus r over 4. So your interest rate 6% divided by 4. So you get 1.5% four times a year. That's what the 4 comes up here, times t. And then compounded monthly, you would have r divided by 12. So 6% divided by 12, right? That would be like just like 6 over 12 is 1 half. So it's, it's about a half a percent 12, 12 times a year. Let me just check that one. I'm thinking of 0 0.06 divided by 12. Yeah, so half a percent. Sorry, I don't know why. I had to, th I had to think about that one. Um, so compounded weekly, there are 52 weeks in a year. So you take your interest rate divided by 52 and raise it to the 52nd power times the number of years, t. And then finally, daily, let's assume they, they, they count 365 days per year or however they count it, that'll be your denominator here, and that will go in the exponent as well. So you have weekly and daily. Let's look at an example to make sure this is making sense. So let's say it's compounded daily, and let's say you have 10% compounded daily for two years at 6% interest. So how would you do this? Well, you take your 10,000 and you multiply it by 1 plus 0 0.06, there's your 6%, divided by 365, to the power of 365 times 2, and you get about $11,274.86. So this formula helps you deal with multiple um, different approaches to compounding money. And what's interesting is um, if we look at the compound rate and the amount you end up with, we kind of end up with a simple conclusion here. In our case, if you compound it daily, 11,274, that's greater than 11,236, which is the amount we would get when we compound it yearly. So with m the more we compound the money, the faster it grows. And this is not so obvious, um, but we'll talk about why this is. So it's not an accident that's happening here. And we can say in general, the more you compound your money, the faster it grows. All right. So let's, let's look at this. <laughs> so why, why does it make sense that the more you compound your money, the faster it grows? So let's say you, your present value is a dollar. You start with a dollar. Present value equals one dollar. And the, you have 100% interest. Okay. Pretty great, right? 100% interest. So... If we look at our, our, if we think about this, our future value would be the dollar you invested times one, this is compounded once a year, plus our interest rate, 100% is one for one year. So it's one times one plus one, or one times two, and that's two. So that makes sense. You start with a dollar, you have a 100% interest rate, and that doubles your money to two dollars, one to two. But what if I said, so instead of 100% interest compounded 
once, or was it compounded annually? What if I offered you 100% interest compounded semi-annually? Now, before we plug it into our formula and, and think about it that way, let's, let's think about what this means. It's saying you can get 50% twice a year. That's what it's offering you. So instead of getting the 100% interest at once, we'll offer you 50% on your, on your dollar once, let's say halfway through the year, and then another 50% at the end. Is that better? So let's look at this. So the future value. So we take our dollar, and you multiply it by 1 plus 1 half. This is the first time. So you get 150% of the dollar. That's $1.50. That's after six months. But then the second time you do it, you now have a dollar fifty, and that second fifty percent, one plus point five, is added to a dollar fifty, and that's going to give you two twenty-five, right? Uh, one and a half of dollar fifty is two twenty-five. So instead of ending up with two dollars here, we now have two twenty-five. And why does that make sense? Well, getting fifty percent twice is going to have to be better, because the second time you apply the fifty percent, it's on a larger amount. Right, that first little percent growth, that the first half growth, got you to a dollar fifty. Then your second fifty percent is growing on that dollar fifty, which is going to give you a larger growth. Right, a percent is based on the number you're multiplying it by. So fifty percent of a dollar fifty is bigger than that fifty percent of just a dollar here. It would be the same if it was not compounding. If you didn't, if you didn't compound it, getting fifty percent on a dollar would give you fifty cents twice and that will give you a total of $2, but that's not what's happening here. We're compounding. It means the money you invest grows on itself. So, so getting so more, the more times you compound your money, right, the better.